Hey guys, this is Matthew Berry, CCIE number 26721. And the purpose of this brief screencast is to talk about the device-based CCIE voice lab approach. So when you go to any training class or read books online or, or whatever, uh, most of them are going to guide you in the direction of a technology-based approach, which means you start with the beginning of a lab and you work all the way through in a linear fashion until you finish the lab. Uh, this approach is a little bit different. Um, I think the benefits of a device-based approach is it's much faster. You have more time at the end of your lab to do troubleshooting, and it keeps you from jumping around uh, from device to device. Okay, so when you go into the lab, you're going to get two pieces of paper, pens and highlighters. You're going to take one piece of paper, and you're going to make a grid sort of like this. Um, you have a section for your dial plan, and then you have a box for every single device that you're going to touch in your lab. Um, the one exception is I have QoS broken out, but QoS resides under the box for the device that it pertains to. So you're going to make this grid really quickly, and then you're going to start reading through your lab. And as you read through your lab, um, you're going to start with question 1.1, and let's just say that is uh, VLANs. What you're going to do is you read the question and you think to yourself, what devices do I need to touch in order, in order to, to fulfill the requirements for this question? So for VLANs, obviously you're going to write 1.1 under your switch. You're going to write 1.1 under your HQ router because you're going to have to make a .q trunk. You're going to write it under your branch 1 router and your branch 2 router because chances are you have ether switch modules there and you're going to have to deal with VLANs. And you keep doing that until you read through the entire lab. Now, let's say you're 20 or 30 minutes into it, depending on how fast you read, you have a nice little grid that says, you know, what questions you have to address for each device. So in order for that device to be fully configured at the end of the lab, you know, for my 3750, I'm going to have to answer question 1.1, 1.2, and let's just say 7.1. These are these, uh, what I put here is purely an example off the top of my head. I know that there's some mistakes in there, but it's just an example. So uh, the reason that a technology-based approach doesn't work uh, for many people, and it takes a lot of time, is if you look at these red lines, this is, I'm trying to simulate your, your progress as you're going through the lab. You know, you start by VLANs and you're hopping from one device, you know, from the switch to the HQ router to branch one to branch two. Um, okay, you know, that's not too bad, but what about when you get to configuring your gateways and you have to tie them into call manager? If you look here in the middle of the, you know, under HQ router, you set up MGCP for question 4.1, then you have to jump down to call manager and do the, um, the MGCP requirements for 4.1. Then you get to 4.2, which is H323 in your branch 1 gateway, and you have to set that up on branch 1, then you have to jump back to call manager, and you're just going all over the, all, uh, all over the place. You get into uh, Unity Connection, and you know you have to do a PIM G, you know, a, a PIM integration, and then all of a sudden, you know, you're between Unity Connection, Q, you know, you might even have some call manager in there, and you're just going all over the place. And and I think it's a really bad approach, and it takes a lot of time. So instead, with a technology-based approach, or a, I'm sorry, a device-based device-based approach, you end up with a nice, clean process, like you see here by these green lines. Um, and this is what I did on my lab. I sat down in San Jose and I went through on the switch. I did 1.1, 1.2. I did my QoS for my switch, and then I was done. I didn't touch my switch again uh, unless I was, you know, doing verification. I didn't do any more configuration on it. Then I went to my HQ router and I did everything that I could on my HQ router. Then I was done. Then I went to my branch one, went through it. Did my QoS, I was done. Did my branch 2 router, QoS, done. Um, call manager, I went through most of my call manager. So really by the time I hit lunch, my phones hadn't registered for probably about three, three and a half hours because I was working on all of my iOS devices. But by the time I left for lunch, my phones were completely registered and I knew that every single thing that I needed to do on my iOS devices were completely done with the exception of Call Manager Express and Unity Connection and, and some of those other things. And actually, I was able to finish the lab in six hours. I had two hours to do troubleshooting. And uh, fortunately, I passed the first time. So I think this is a really good technique to use, and I hope you guys benefited from the screencast.